Hey guys, it's Anna from Bright Lane Gardens, and today I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to create your very own DIY hydroponic system using this tote from Home Depot. This is a DWC hydroponic system, which is perfect for beginners. And I was able to do this entire project for less than $60, which it's hard to do anything for less than $60 in 2023. This project does require the use of a drill, but outside of that, that's as complicated as it gets. So if you are wary about taking on construction type projects, I promise you, if I can do this, you can do it too. Without any further delay, let's get to it. There are just a handful of things that we'll need to get started with this project and keep in mind everything that I'm about to show you with the exception of the drill and the drill bit was under $60. So this is a really affordable DIY project that you can do this winter. The first thing that we'll need is a heavy duty tote to act as the structure for our hydroponic system. I selected this 14 gallon tote from Home Depot primarily because I liked how rigid the lid was. It comes with these convenient little triangles that have an additional layer of plastic in between and I plan to drill my holes inside each one of these triangles. By following this pattern, I'll be able to fit 23 individual plants in this single 14 gallon tote. Next, you'll need a net pot to hold your plants while they're in your hydroponic system. I selected these two inch net pots from Amazon and they came with these neat little lids that are gonna do a great job at blocking the light out and helping to prevent algae growth in my hydroponic system. To provide oxygen to the roots of my plants inside my system, I need an air stone that's going to be hooked up to an air pump. This pump is extremely efficient and can power up to four air stones at the same time. I selected this pump because the brand is a reliable one that I've used before and I know it does well for hydroponic systems. This pump did come with these little itty bitty air stones that are about the size of my thumb. These aren't anywhere near big enough for what I want for my plants. So I did go ahead and pick up this disc style air stone. I like this style here because it comes with these suction cups that will keep it suctioned to the bottom of my tote, which means that the bubbles will go directly up and hit the roots of my plants. I plan to put three of these air stones in the bottom of this 14 gallon tote to provide oxygen for 23 individual plants. My air pump did come with the appropriate size tubing, but just be aware as you order your air pumps, make sure it comes with tubing, and if it does not, you'll need to order that separately before you can successfully transplant your plants into your hydroponic system. And last but not least, you will need a drill with a whole style drill bit. This is a Milwaukee fuel drill. It is the hammer style drill, which we will not need for drilling through plastic, but I did attach a two inch hole drill bit. Make sure that when you do get your net cups, you measure them individually against the bit that you use. Otherwise you'll run the risk of the net cup falling directly through the hole that you've already drilled. And trust me, I'm telling you this from experience. Those are all the materials that we'll need for this project. So let's go ahead and get started on our first step. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and drill my holes into the top of this lid. Now, when you're using a hole drill bit like this, you wanna make sure that you can easily get the pilot part through first, which is the very center part of the bit here. And then you're gonna slowly, without much pressure at all, allow the outer edge of this bit to go ahead and drill that circle for you. You really don't wanna press down too hard when you're using plastic. A lot of times different types of plastic can easily crack, so let the drill bit do its job and dig its teeth into the plastic so it can successfully drill that hole without making any cracks. Be careful when removing your circle of plastic from your drill bit. Make sure that you don't keep your finger on the trigger. If you accidentally pull it, this will tear up your fingers pretty darn quickly. Repeat this process with as many holes as you want to create. Just be aware of any weak points that you're creating in your plastic lid. If you don't have a lid that has these extra little ribs like this, you'll want to make sure that your holes are spaced far enough apart that your lid can hold up to the weight of the plants. After you've drilled a couple holes, it's always a great idea to test out your net pots and make sure that they're going to fit comfortably in your holes before you spend the time on the rest of your lid.
your nap pods are drilled, you want to start thinking about how you want to organize your air stones inside of your container. I know that I want three of my disc air stones evenly spaced on the bottom of my container, so I need to drill three holes for the tubing to go down to the air stones. For the tubing, you want your holes to be on the side of the container here and not on the lid of the container. This will make things significantly easier when you go to do your weekly cleanouts so that you can remove the lid completely and set it aside without having to remove the air stones as well. To drill my holes for the tubing, I'm going to go ahead and remove my hole drill bit. And I'm using a 5 16 drill bit here. This is slightly larger than my tubing. It's okay to go slightly larger. You just don't want to go slightly smaller. Otherwise, it will pinch your tubing and restrict the airflow to your air stones. When you go to drill the holes for your tubing, you want to go up as close to the top of the lid as you can go. If you go any lower than that, you'll run the risk of losing some water out of those holes, which we certainly don't want to deal with any leaks on an indoor hydroponics system. I'm going to go ahead and drill all three of my holes right now. Once you've drilled your holes in the side, take a little bit of your tubing and just make sure that it'll fit through the hole that you drilled. It should be able to easily slide in and out of that hole without any restriction to ensure that enough airflow can make it through your tubes. This next part is important and will take a little bit of advanced planning before you actually cut any of your tubing. Envision where you plan to keep your hydroponic system. Make sure you take the tote there, measure it out, make sure everything fits like it should, and make sure that there's an outlet close by that you can plug your air pump into. Once you've selected the spot that you're for sure going to put your system, then you wanna go ahead and plug in your air pump and measure the distance that it'll take for your tubing to get from your air pump to the air stones inside of your bin. Add several inches of additional length to your tubing even once you feel you've had enough this will ensure that you have some flexibility to move your system a couple inches to the left or a couple inches to the right when it comes time for cleanup and tidying up at the end of the day. The way that I have my setup organized, I'm going to be able to keep my air pump directly behind my tote here, so I really don't need too much extra length and I can go ahead and measure it right here in front of you guys. Start by placing your air stones exactly where you want them to go inside of your hydroponic setup. From there, you'll take your roll of tubing and start to go ahead and slide it through the holes that you drill. Loosely connect one end of your tubing to the outlet on the air stone, and then measure the distance it would take for that tubing to get all the way over to your air pump, adding in four to five inches for some flexibility. Go ahead and cut your tubing when you're ready and repeat this process on your other two air stones. The tubing on the inside of your container should look like this, no kinks and no areas where it's being overstretched. The initial setup and in all of the drilling for our project is officially complete. So now our goal is to test out all of the components and make sure everything's working before we decide to put plants in here. Now, one word of wisdom that I have to offer, you just drilled a bunch of plastic directly into the container that you're probably going to be growing food in. So this is a great time to take a dryer sheet or anything that can have an anti-static effect to remove a lot of those plastic shavings that have been dumped back into your container. I'm gonna go ahead and give my container a really thorough cleaning, including the lid and my air stones, and I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything back up. We'll do a water test next. I cleaned out my container and the lid as best as I could, as well as swept up any plastic shavings that I found in the direct area. So now that my space is clean, I'm gonna go ahead and get my entire system hooked up so that I can do a test run with water. My 
system is completely set up and assembled at this point, but before we do the wet run, I just wanted to run through quickly how the DWC method works with this type of setup. So starting with our air pump over here on the left, the air pump will plug into the wall up here and the air will flow through this clear tubing into the side wall that you drilled a hole into here and the air will come out in the form of oxygenated bubbles through the circular air stones down here at the bottom. These air stones do have suction cups on the bottom of them, which will keep them anchored to the bottom of our container, which is great for producing more bubbles that will hit more of the plants up top. The plants will be placed into these net pots that sit in these holes that you drilled on the top of the container here, and their roots will drip down and sit in the nutrient solution that will reside inside of this container. That nutrient solution will be oxygenated from the air stones down below, which will provide your plants with both nutrients and oxygen as they grow. DWC means deep water culture and essentially that just means that the roots of the plants you are growing sits in this nutrient rich solution and that is what feeds and waters the plants as they grow. It's a super basic setup and it's literally as easy as that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and test out our system with some water. To test out our system, we only need to fill up enough water to cover the air stones completely. Once you've made sure that there's enough water to cover your air stones and that your air stones are securely anchored where you want them, we'll go ahead and plug it in. Here's the moment of truth. You'll wanna make sure that there's plenty of bubbles coming in out of each of your air stones and it looks like all four of our air stones are performing exactly how we want them to. The pump sounds great. I don't hear any abnormal sounds. So this system is ready to go. Creating your very own DWC hydroponic system is just as simple as that. As I mentioned before, this project was under $60, which is a very low investment to get started on a hobby that can be so fulfilling. My seedlings aren't quite ready for transplant yet, but as soon as they are, my system is ready to go ahead and take on its first batch of leafy greens. If you're wanting to get into hydroponics at all, I highly recommend trying out a system like this. It's so simple to get started on and it's one of the least expensive investments up front. This versatile system was so fun and easy to create and I'm always looking for ideas like this. So if you have any suggestions or any systems that you want me to try out next, leave them in the comment section below. If you have any questions at all on my hydroponic process, any of my DWC systems, and my hydroponic gardening in general, definitely leave them in the comments section below. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. I sure do appreciate any time that you spend here on our channel. And as always, I sure hope to catch you next time. Bye-bye.